Good evening, everybody. Uh, just a few words of reflection on the readings uh, from today's Mass uh, for Tuesday of Holy Week. Uh, we continue to have some very uh, powerful, very beautiful readings. I've included the link with this video. I hope you'll take the time to read the readings um, and reflect upon them yourself. So uh, here's some, some points uh, maybe to start you on that process. Um, our first reading is the second canticle of the Servant of the Lord. I mentioned uh, yesterday that we have uh, all four of those very important passages from Isaiah um, as part of the readings this week. This is from chapter 49. Um, and again, the servant of the Lord here uh, is the fulfillment of uh, God's promises that David's uh, throne would be filled by his heir for all times. Um, but uh, the key or kind of a clue that that promise is going to be fulfilled in the unexpected way that Jesus did fulfill it. And so we hear, uh, first of all, uh, that the Lord called me from birth, from my mother's womb. He gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. So there's this this indication that the Lord's uh, servant, that his promised servant, is going to be in some way unexpected or kind of hidden or surprising. Uh, then it continues a little bit farther along. Uh, Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. We have this indication that the servant will appear to have been defeated, uh, will appear to have failed. And it really resonates with the gospel passage from John today, uh, where we hear of um, that moment uh, when uh, Judas is leaving, uh, when Judas is going out into the night, uh, where Judas is uh, going out to betray the Lord. And Jesus uh, confirms that in saying, the one who's about to dip his morsel uh, in the food with me uh, is the one who will betray me. You know, when we think of that figure of Judas, I think it's really important that we not... Um, Maybe take the posture of, oh, terrible Judas, you know, that bad man off there in the distance. Uh, um, I can never understand how someone could do that. I hope we can't imagine betraying the Lord. But then again, I hope during this Lenten season, um, uh, our self-inspection, uh, uh, the examination of our conscience and our lives has indicated uh, to us that in ways large and small, it's true uh, that it's really possible for us to, to sadly to follow after Judas, um, to, to turn our back on, on the Lord in ways large and small. Um, I don't desire that that be present in our lives, but I believe that it is, and I do desire that we recognize that. Um, so the thing that we, we seek uh, is, is that, that accurate self-knowledge, uh, that humble awareness uh, that we have at times said no to the Lord in ways large and small, and that um, uh, we're in need of that repentance. Um, it's worth noting, of course, that uh, Judas betrays the Lord, but then so does Peter. Uh, Peter, uh, in one place, it seems almost takes an oath denying Christ, a very uh, terrible kind of formal act of rejecting Jesus. Um, and the difference between them is not necessarily uh, so much the gravity uh, of the act by which they've uh, rejected the Lord or betrayed him, um, but the decision they make afterwards. And of course, Peter's decision, we know uh, in a very hopeful way, is to repent. Uh, we'll be hearing about that whole journey here in the coming days. And so um, Jesus, uh, his failure seems to be gathering in upon him, kind of looming over him as Judas goes to betray him. Uh, the prophecy is fulfilled uh, that it seemed that Jesus had toiled in vain and that for nothing uselessly he had spent his strength. On Good Friday, we'll come to that moment where his defeat uh, seemed to be certain, seemed to be final and definitive. Uh, but we know what came after. We know that the Lord, in fact, uh, overwhelmed even the power of death itself. And this is possible in our lives. Um, uh, not only did the Lord come and walk with us, but now during these days of Holy Week and as we enter into the Triduum, we're being invited to walk with him and to trust um, that he can redeem all that is broken within us. Um, Finally, just a word about the psalm. We hear again that beautiful refrain of the Lord being our rock and our place of refuge. Um, if we build our life on anything other than Christ, um, it will wash away. Uh, we don't even know exactly what Judas's reasons were. Um, some suggest money, some suggest jealousy, but he had built somehow his life on something other than the truth of Christ. Um, Peter denied Christ. Uh, he was on a path to walk away from him, to build his life on uh, trying to protect his physical safety. Um, we know that Peter would have that conversion and would build on Christ, even laying down his life. Um, and so that's uh, our great desire. It's the Lord's desire, I believe, for us, the church's invitation, that we would, uh, recognizing our capacity to turn away from the Lord and even to betray him, we would, with his help, turn back um, and build our life once again on him, place him at the very center, at the very bedrock and foundation of our life, uh, where uh, he cannot be shaken, uh, that our lives would be stable and, and would grow and would rise up um, under his grace. Uh, my desire for you and for myself, I believe the Lord's desire for us during this Holy Week. Know of my prayers for you and please pray for me. God bless.